Let's begin with an empty scene in 3ds Max. In the extended primitives object type, select the Hedra shape and drag it into the viewport. Change the parameter to dodecaicos and set the radius parameter to 15 millimeters. Optionally, for modeling purposes, you can set the object color to a standard gray and the wireframe color to black. Add an Edit Poly modifier, enter Polygon Mode, then select one of the pentagonal polygons on the object. Go to the Graphite Modeling ribbon, locate the Modify Selection panel, and click the Similar option. Now locate the Subdivision panel on the ribbon. Hold down Shift on the keyboard and click on the Tessellate button. Change the style of tessellation from Edge to Polygon. Hold down both Shift and Control on the keyboard while clicking on the Edge Mode icon in the Selection panel. You should now see all of the inner star-shaped edges are selected. Shift click on connect in the ribbon and change the segments to three. Then click OK to accept this operation. Now select the outermost edge loop and use the similar option to select all the identical edge loops around the object. Now we need to enable the Select and Rotate Gizmo by pressing E for the keyboard shortcut, then change the Reference Coordinate System to Local and enable the Use Selection Center. At the bottom of the screen, click to enable the Offset Mode Transform Type in on the status bar. In the Z Parameter box, go ahead and type in 15.0 millimeters and press Enter on the keyboard. Now let's select the next pentagonal edge loop. Select similar again to grab all of the identical loops, then type 30.0 millimeters into the Z parameter. Click enter and you should see the rotation of those edges in the viewport. Finally, we will select the smallest pentagonal edge loop Select Similar to grab all of the identical loops, then type 60.0 into the Z parameter. Now you should select each of the five edges originating at the center of the pentagonal sides. Double click each one to select the entire edge loop and use the Select Similar command to grab all of them. Shift click on Extrude in the Edges panel of the ribbon to bring up the caddy. Enter 5.0 millimeters into the height parameter and then increase the width until you no longer see any effect on the topology in the viewport. This should probably be somewhere between 41 and 42 millimeters. Then click OK to accept the parameters. In polygon mode, the previous selection should still be maintained. Turn on the wireframe view by pressing F3 hotkey and you should be able to see the selected slivers of those previous faces in that object. Just press delete on the keyboard to remove those extraneous polygons. In vertex mode, control A to select all. In the vertices panel of the ribbon, Bring up the Weld Caddy. The default 0.1 millimeters should be sufficient enough. You should see 762 before and 522 vertices after welding. 
Now in polygon mode, select a triangle polygon on the model as shown. Then select similar to grab all of the identical polygons. Enable wireframe mode by pressing F3 on the keyboard. Bring up the extrude caddy again and change the height parameter to a negative 10.45 millimeters or until you see the edges and vertices of each of the selected polygons touching each other. It's okay if some of them are overlapping here, but it's best not to leave any gaps between the triangles. Hold down Control on the keyboard and click the vertex icon. This trick only works if you change modes using the icons in the selection panel. This process will pass the polygon selection over to the vertices of those selected polygons. Now you can go back to the polygon mode and delete those triangle faces. Then go back to vertex mode. At this point, you can bring up the vertex weld caddy. The default of 0.1 millimeters should be sufficient. Notice your before count should be 582 and after welding, you should be left with 534. In edge mode, select the top edge loops on all of the extruded edges as shown. Use select similar to grab them all. Now, while all the edges are still selected and edge mode is active, go to the modifiers list and start typing in crease. You should see the crease modifier appear. Go ahead and select the modifier and then type in a value of 0.1 into the parameter field. Higher values could result in topology pinching in some areas. So 0.1 is the recommended value. Now add an open subdiv modifier to the top of the stack and change the iterations to at least three. I'd recommend as many as four if you plan to export for 3D printing. That concludes this lesson. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.